Good evening. A huge police deployment has scrambled through the streets of Melbourne to contain violent protesters. The latest showdown between antagonists from the extreme left and right resulted in three arrests and the Australian flag being burned. The worst of the violence happened on the fringes of the protests. This man was set upon in Carlton Gardens by an offshoot of the group from the ultra-left. With tempers hot, the anarchists then moved on to set fire to Australian flags. Not illegal, but a definite danger. Skirmishes continue to break out as the large police presence moved to deal with spot fire after spot fire. At one stage, supposed allies on the left squared off against each other. Everyone kind of turned on me, even though we're supposedly on the same side, but I think that proves that we're not. Riot police came to the aid of right wingers who were being escorted away from the rallies. It led to a crush at an entry to the parliament train station involving dozens of police. The ultra-left took to the streets to disrupt a rally by self-described patriots. Around 100 members of groups such as the True Blue Crew and United Patriots Front gathered to promote their vision of national solidarity. Are we cowards or conquerors? Conquerors! We will conquer this land again as we did in the beginning. Good luck to anyone who tries to stop us. Let's move! Standing in their way were a couple of hundred protesters who occupied Spring Street outside State Parliament. The majority of the group staged a peaceful march through the city after splinter groups took off to confront the flag bearers. The situation kept police on their toes. They were forced to reallocate resources throughout the city with both groups on the move. There were three arrests, two for assault and one for criminal damage over an attack on a photographer. One female police member was injured after she took a fall. There were no injuries to any members of the public here today, so in general police would re regard that as a very successful operation. The state government is promising to crack down on troublemakers at protests, including those who wear masks. Can you tell us why it's necessary to cover your face for this? Because we fear for our safety. Both sides remain committed to taking to the streets for their causes, but their messages continue to be lost in the violence. Cameron Bowe, 7 News.